how you watch a movie is, is very much based on, on the sound and the sound work. Sound is such a subliminal part of storytelling. It's often the hidden kind of work that goes into a film. You can draw from different types of sounds and different tones and create some kind of audio landscape. And in the case of Harold and Kumar, the landscape was a duty. When I first read through the script, it seemed pretty straightforward. It seemed like there wasn't going to be anything particularly unique about the way the sound was going to work. And then I got to the diarrhea scene. And immediately I was like, I don't even know if, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I mean, I don't even know if I'm the right person for the job because I don't know where to go. Hey. Do you have any diarrhea? Diarrhea recordings? Uh, is that a is that a band? No, I mean, I mean recordings of like people uh, having diarrhea, farting. I started looking in certain libraries, pre-recorded uh, fart sounds. Some of them very old. Some of them dating back to 30, 40 years. They weren't enough. That wasn't enough. They didn't have the the richness and the variety. I had to go into the field. I mean, I really had to go to different places where I thought I could get the right sounds. Hi. Uh, I'm doing some uh, recordings for a low-budget uh, feature film, and I was uh, wondering if I could do a few recordings in your restroom. In our restroom? Yeah. I started off with um, what they call a boom. Uh, they hold it over their head, and it's got the, the Zeppelin shape on the, on the end of it. So then I, I started switching to uh, smaller mics. And I found some discreet places to plant it. I got a much better recording of the toilet flushing than their diarrhea. I had to go back to the drawing board and, and figure out where I went wrong. So this was a boom pole with a, uh, a kind of a hook shape to it, and I could much more easily get that underneath the toilet stall, have much more freedom of movement. was great, except that he was a grunter and a moaner, and he, on my recordings, just had his moaning all over it. <sighs> what happened was that I was in a fast food place with Danny, and they had a TV set, and uh, Convoy was on. I said, I think I have the idea. Jeff, you gotta, this is it. Let's go hit a truck stop. If you go out to a truck stop, that's where you're gonna find a great variety. The truckers are really good because they're sitting all day. They're all compacted from driving 10 hours on the road, you know, and, and it, can, it, it can take a little while for them to get going, but when they do, gold. Oh. 
he went to the truck stop, he got some big ass sounds and they were great. But we need a little feminine touch. I agree that women's farts are different. They are different from men's farts. There's just, there's no, there's no way around it. So a lot of the recordings I did were not, were not usable. What am I gonna do? You know, I can't just walk in to a lady's room. I do think there's some ethical issues about recording people defecating uh, without uh, uh, their knowledge. I figured if they, if they didn't know that I was doing it, then it wouldn't bother them. In the end, he convinced me that um, for the sake of the movie and uh, in his moral code, it's, it seems to be okay. So when I'm finished collecting all the sounds that I need, then I go back to my editing room. I digitally import all of the sound effects into the computer. And now I can manipulate them, now I can layer them, now I can really hear them. Imagine an artist's palette with Instead of different kinds of paint, it would be different farts on it. And you can just choose the kind you want, blend them together, and create the right, the right feeling. Oh, we're pretty close, right? Yeah, I think I so. Hope. I think so. There we go. Today I played the scene for Danny for the first time. I prepared for like three or four hours trying to make sure that I could actually sit down and play it for him in one, one sitting. It's like 10 seconds early, I don't understand. We talked about this the other time. I don't want any sounds there. When I've had diarrhea, uh, I usually sit down and go. It's a uh, fucking disaster already. I know, I'm sorry, I knew it would be. Uh, and that was actually my mistake because Danny pointed out to me that it's not diarrhea, it's a case of taco shits. Right there. Right there is exactly when the first fart should Hey, Clarice. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So my, my interpretation was completely wrong. Do you have anything just like a little more drippy for that first one? Wetter? A little wetter, yeah. I got bubbles, I got... I don't want bubbles for this. I want wet. One of the things that I have to do as a, as a sound designer is not go by exactly what the director is saying, but by what I think he means, because translating sound into words is not necessarily something that you can do. Are any of these your own? Is this stuff that you do all by yourself, or is this, these are? That's me. That's you? Yeah. That was a good one. I like someone who, uh, you know, puts their, you know, best foot forward in, in that regard, and, uh, I was very proud of him on a certain level. Now let's just, we just play it right from there and play it to the end of the scene, all right? Okay. Okay. Chris, are you still there? That's great. I, I kind of felt like I was taking part in history. I think that uh, this is an important scene and I think that it will be remembered. And I, just, I know that it was very important for Danny. It was very important for me. I think we're done. That was awesome. All right. I'm just going to clean well, it up and finesse it a little clean bit. Clean it up. That's and, good. Uh, all right, it's great work. <sighs> Thank God. He pushed himself, and I pushed him. And in our working together, it's some of his finest work. It's interesting because uh, when you go on like locations to record certain sounds, you have to deal with certain phobias that you may have had for years. And in this case, we're talking about diarrhea, and I think people naturally have a phobia about other people's shit. And I certainly had to overcome that. But now, uh, when I walk into uh, a restroom and I smell diarrhea, it doesn't bother me at all, because I, I associate it with something good. <laughs> Hi, gentlemen. Would you guys mind turning around for me? I need to...
I need that. 